So usually for, for AO, there's people use screen space techniques. And screen space techniques like SSAO, they just darkens the corner and edges. And they also, also tend to leave a dark halo around object borders. So it, fail, it also fills the viewport boundaries and cannot handle occlusion from off-screen geometry or in-screen geometry, but occluded. So, so there's some artifact there. But the most important reason I think ray trace ambient occlusion is going to be preferable is that ray tracing is actually curing the visibility around the scene surface point by actually tracing rays against the geometries in the scenes instead of just sampling the, across the depth buffer. So the results is just going to be more physically correct and gives you higher visual quality. So here's some comparison. So this is screen space AO. You can see it does give, provide a, a sense of occlusion, but if you look closer, it's also like an edge detect detection. It darkens everything at the edges, and there's a halo around that plant there. And this is our ray tracing-based solution with two sample per pixel plus denoising. So you see it's, it's very different, and so it's an easy cell. And this is the ground truth, again, rendered with a lot of sample per pixel converged. And if we com uh, compare with our denoise result, you can see that, again, the, ca the ground truth captures the, the fine details, high-frequency detail in contact region better. But in general, I'm pretty impressed that we can get this close with only two samples per pixel. And then this is the input to our denoiser, which mm, makes you dizzy. And with that aside, let's run the AO demo. Here is a high-level overview of how the filter works. Our, our denoiser is, again, a cross-bilateral filter with adaptive filter footprint per pixel. And the general idea is it's actually based on an existing publication called Access Line Filter for Indirect Diffuse from Meta et al. from 2013. So it's one of those four-year space analysis paper from UC Berkeley, which basically vary the filter size based on the ray hit distance. So intuitively, the visibility should change slower in open region than in contact region. So we can basically just apply the fil larger filter in open region, apply a smaller filter in, in the contact region. And that is really actually quite effective at preserving all the, uh, the fine contact hardening details, high frequency contact details in the, in the contact region, which is something that we do want to preserve uh, in our denoiser. And the result that we are showing is with two samples per pixel. At one sample per pixel, it also worked pretty well, especially for you know, far field occlusion stuff. But for the near, near field contact, we, we, we need to get to, to at least two sample per pixel to reconstruct that well. So there's still some filter work. <laughs> 